Welcome, age of vintage society. In life, everyone has a right to what they believe in, including not believing, and the law itself recognises the right to remain silent. But silence can be dangerous when everyone expects you to say something. A clear case of the talented Dalton Trumbo, who decided to keep mute when the authorities needed him to do the opposite. And he paid for it with a jail sentence. But as they say, a goldfish has no hiding place. The reason he was able to overcome the setback and achieve even more greatness than very few expected. How Dalton Trumbo snatched the Oscar anonymously. The inspirational life story of Dalton Trumbo reminds me of the saying that destiny can be delayed but can't be denied. How this highly creative gentleman rose to extraordinary fame after suffering such a painful humiliation, orchestrated by the state authority, remains a wonder to many. An award-winning author and screenwriter, famously remembered for not just his Hollywood career success, but the private issues that threatened his life and career in the state. A humble talent who began his professional creativity with Warner Brothers soon finds himself unfortunately linked to events that angered the American state, more for refusing to cooperate with the panel investigating his alleged communist ties. We all remember the so-called Hollywood Ten. As a reminder, they were blacklisted by the relevant authority for refusing to name names as requested by the team investigating artists with communist sympathy at the time. His social come political quagmire persisted until the early 1960s when fortune smiled on him and his delayed destiny manifested as pre-designed. Dalton Trumbo is among the most famous Hollywood screenwriters of his era. You might not have known him that much, simply because he worked behind the scenes to pioneer many classics, and was famously applauded as the brain behind the Oscar-winning Roman Holiday, which featured Audrey Hepburn and Gregory Peck. Apart from the many novels to his credit, Trumbo may have been involved in left-wing politics, which was the only thing that threatened his greatness in Hollywood. From the year Trumbo got blacklisted from the film industry till the year the gravity of his offence waned and the concept elapsed, several occurrences, interestingly, took place in the entertainment arena, because the then young talent continued to function and service the industry remotely. He secretly worked with Douglas and Olivia, as Mitzi his daughter recalled in writing the screenplay for Spartacus, which became one of the biggest box office successes of all time. Critics said the moment Trumbo was officially announced as the screenwriter of that film on its release in 1960, the black list of a jinx that held him down for years was theoretically disbanded. The concept of un-American activities became a debatable topic, because it created a divisive period where allegiances were quizzed and friendships shattered. Trumbo was said to have expressed communist sympathy for about five years before he was torchlighted, among other screenwriters and directors, and was found guilty of contempt of Congress. A few of the witnesses invited to testify in front of the committee did as they were told and escaped the punishment. The likes of the director of On the Waterfront, Elia Kazan, named names, and were permitted to continue their Hollywood jobs. Those who testified were also viewed as betrayals. For instance, the playwright Arthur Miller, who was a lifelong pal to Kazan, severed his friendship with him because of his flexible stance on the issue. The anger was so high from a section of the Hollywood community about the likes of Kazan, who testified against their colleagues for years, I even heard that while he accepted an honorary Oscar in 1999, several people in the audience would not clap hands because of the reservation they have about the past. In case you're not too grounded with the issues that transpired, here's a recap of the entire incident. It is on record that around 1946 and 1952, the number of FBI agents increased by 50% because of President Truman's loyalty security project, aimed at investigating government employees as to identify communist sympathisers within the system. About a year after that programme began, precisely on October 1947, the House Committee on Un-American Activities started to compel screenwriters and directors suspected to have a link with the left-wing agenda to appear before it to testify about their involvement. 
That process saw 10 Hollywood actors, screenwriters and directors refusing to cooperate with the committee by answering their questions. This led to the 10 persons involved being blacklisted by Hollywood studios, who at the time were acting in favour of the power that is. It did not end there. The revelations made by some of those questioned led to hundreds of artists being banned by the industry. I still remember Charlie Chaplin and Orson Welles as one of those affected by that process. When Senator Joe McCarthy launched an anti-communist campaign and accused over 200 State Department staff of being left-wing sympathisers, the situation became critical. Several years after, HUAC got criticised by then ex-President Truman and he was quoted to have likened its activities to the most un-American thing in the country, of course leading to the disbandment of that policy. Dalton Trumbo was born in Montrose, Colorado sometime in 1905 when his parents relocated to Grand Junction, a mega town situated on Colorado's western slope. At Grand Junction High School, Dalton served Walter Walker as a trainee reporter for the Grand Junction Daily Sentinel, covering court proceedings, school and other civic institutions. When he left high school, his parents finished the westward trek that their family had started 200 years earlier, before shifting residence to Los Angeles. He also worked as a journalist for the Boulder Daily Camera, while also contributing to the University of Colorado campus comic magazine. A visionary fellow he is, Dalton fraternised with the Delta Tau Delta International Fraternity. Dalton was still undergoing academic study at the University of Colorado when his father died. Things became so tough for the family, forcing young Dalton to look for alternative means of family income. To support his mother and two little sisters, Trumbo took a side job as a night bread wrapper in a Los Angeles bakery, a job he was doing and earning a weekly salary of $40. At some point he felt a need to upgrade his income as he began writing short stories, which was more of an inspirational activity, a time he wrote 80 short stories and 6 novels that never gave him much income. Dalton ran a two-year program at the University of Southern California and did other odd jobs including repossessing motorcycles and reviewing pictures for a movie trade magazine, as the case may be. Dalton soon began selling occasional articles to magazines after halting his bakery jobs. It seems Dalton had an instinct that told him to continue writing and believed he could make a living with his creativity as a writer. He soon grew in popularity with his articles published in leading newspapers and magazines, and by 1934 his first novel, Eclipse, was published. The same year his screenwriting activities began. Another novel, Johnny Got His Gun, followed five years after. That second novel received the American Booksellers Award, which is today known as the National Book Award, as the most original book of the year. Trumbo's movie career as a scriptwriter gathered momentum, and not too long he established his prowess in the industry as one of Hollywood's most important screenwriters, with his work on the legendary A Man to Remember, one of the best ten films of the late 1930s. Other films that have his pen and paper credit are Oscar nominee Kitty Foyle and A Guy Named Joe, 30 Seconds Over Tokyo, just to mention. His misfortune, however, began when he was subpoenaed by the House Committee on Un-American Activities. The team investigated him as one of those said to have dissident influences in the movie-making industry. Reports say out of the number of persons summoned, 19 of them appeared to have acknowledged themselves as unfriendly to the committee's ongoing inquiry. As I said earlier, and regrettably too, Dalton Trumbo found himself among the 10 persons of this number that were billed to testify, but like others of his colleagues who find themselves in the quagmire, Dalton did not think it was wise to betray his colleagues. He stood his ground in the spirit of brotherhood by refusing to name names, as was requested, or to say whether or not he was a communist sympathiser. His silence alongside other nine persons was interpreted as consent, leading to him being barred from writing movies for Hollywood, a decision that came less than a month after the trial ended. The immediate consequence of that unplanned Hollywood blacklist was too hard on this great talent, but he had to do what was needed to be done to put food on his table and continue to remain relevant in the industry. So, what did he do? 
Dalton resulted in selling his script through the black market and worked secretly with a pseudo-name. His anonymous scripts continued to flood the movie industry. He worked secretly for years until such a time the coast was clear for him to resume in Hollywood. Of course it would not be easy to determine the number of scripts he wrote within the period of probation, but there's enough evidence to show that he may have written several blockbuster movies under cover. Some accounts estimated that he may have written about 30 original scripts and adaptations, plus dozens of rewrites, polishes and brush-ups. Although Dalton and nine others were indicted and sentenced to a year in prison and jailed at the Federal Correctional Institute in Kentucky, he was out in 1951, stayed briefly in California before relocating with his wife Cleo and three kids to Mexico City. From Mexico, he operated his undercover scriptwriting engagement for about two years before returning and settling in the Highfield Park area of Los Angeles. Dalton's breakthrough was from The Brave One, which he wrote under the pseudo name of Robert Rich. Interestingly, the movie won the Academy Award for the most original story in 1957. Then the hunt for Robert Rich began, but he is nowhere to be found. When no one came up to claim the name, even the media was so inquisitive in locating Robert Rich. It is at this time that Dalton seized the ensuing scandal to break the restriction. The scandal created by Robert Rich may have forced Otto Preminger to subsequently announce that Dalton is the screenwriter of the famous Exodus. Other directors who secretly used his script began to open up, including Kirk Douglas, who also opened up about Dalton scripting the soon-to-be-released Spartacus, months after Preminger credited him for his production. This and related incidents involving blacklisted screenwriters led to a broad review of the practice, with assistance from the weakening concept in the industry. The result was that Dalton Trumbo was readmitted to the Writers Guild of America and practically brought the blacklist to an end. Talking about Spartacus, Dalton Trumbo was not particularly happy with the rewriting done on some sections of his slave story scenes by unknown persons without his approval, and opined that the rewrite was responsible for the slow turn in the screenplay from his idea of the large Spartacus to the contrasting idea of the small Spartacus. Still blacklisted and operating undercover while that movie was being produced, Dalton was unable to appear on the set during the shooting, but he assumed that the last-minute rewording done on set was part of a covert campaign by Stanley Kubrick to fundamentally change the nature of the script. From the look of things, it appears that most of the changes were done by Howard Fast, alongside Kubrick, at Kirk Douglas's call. Regardless of who or what may have transpired about the slave story, there seems to be a big distortion of history which Spartacus turns out to be. Recall also that Cleo Trumbo, Dalton Trumbo's wife, received an Oscar on his behalf after the Motion Picture Academy of Arts and Sciences decided he earned it for his contribution to the script of Roman Holiday. This was because the movie was released four decades after his demise. Talking about how her father felt about his travels with the state, Mitzi Trumbo Dalton's daughter once recalled how he appeared pretty stoic concerning his blacklisting. In a state of confusion and inherent panic, she says he knew he had to figure out what to do. She added that, honestly, communism was not very important to him. If what Dalton's daughter said is anything to go by, Dalton hated those kinds of meetings. He was an independent thinker and group activities were not his sort of thing, she explained. Perhaps in the principle of democracy he was a crusade for justice and civil rights. Having all of that around you is a nice way to grow up, Mitzi had said. Mitzi was six at the time when her parents left for Mexico. The experience, she said, was a big turnaround, as she had to learn a new language and particularly applauded her mother Cleo for keeping the family together in the face of the hardship that hit the entire Dalton Trumbo family. Talking about his prolific style of fiction writing, a local historian, Dave Fischel, was quoted to have said Dalton Trumbo knew the dark side of small towns. He understood the insularity, the swiftness of public censure, and the predictable prejudices. No doubt Dalton is a man who loved to puncture hypocrisy, yet his cynicism hid something softer. At the time, Trumbo is seen as an isolationist who was inclined to the Communist Party and said to have remained active until 1947, 
though sources said he affiliated with the idea again seven years after. Some of his sins that led to the witch hunt may have been about his novel The Remarkable Andrew, which talked about the ghost of President Andrew Jackson that seemed to caution the US of the dangers of involving in World War II. The views expressed may have been interpreted as clear support for the German-Soviet pact of that era. Talking about his indictment, Dalton said, As far as I was concerned, it was a verdict. I had contempt for that Congress ever since and based on guilt or innocence, I could never really complain very much, he said, adding that it was a crime or misdemeanour. Dalton Trumbo was married to Cleo Fincher. The couple had three kids, including photographer Melissa Trumbo, also known as Mitzi. Dalton died of a heart attack on the 10th of September 1976, somewhere in Los Angeles. But we have another scandalous revelation for you. In our next video, we lift the curtain on how John Astin masterfully concealed a scandal right under everyone's nose. Prepare to have your jaw hit the floor.